There's an exercise that many people, myself included, use to cope with anxiety and panic. It's been around a while, so if you already know this one, no worries. If you haven't, this is a really good tool to have in your toolbox. It's most often called the 54321 grounding technique, and I love the simplicity of it. First, acknowledge five things you can see in your environment. It could be anything, a cup, a spot on the wall, the shirt you're wearing. For each thing you notice, breathe in when you notice it, and as you breathe out, say its name in your mind, like cup or shirt. Next, acknowledge four things you can feel or touch around you. Could be the clothing on your skin, the shoes touching your feet, or the vibration from the car you're riding in. Maybe the breeze or the wind from a ceiling fan. Again, breathe in as you feel the sensation and breathe out as you say its name in your mind. After that, acknowledge three things you can hear around you. The low rumble of city traffic, birds chirping, or even the sound of yourself swallowing, that counts too. Breathe in as you listen to the sound and name it as you breathe out. Moving right along to two things you can smell. It could be anything, your own skin, the soap in the bathroom, or maybe, maybe the dude that just farted in the subway next to you. Try to take a, a deep breath as you smell and name the smell as you breathe out. If you have to expedite this one due to the subway situation, I understand. We've made it to the last one, which is to acknowledge one thing you can taste. Gum, the aftertaste of coffee like me, maybe the remnants of what you had for lunch. Breathe in and taste, breathe out and name it. That's it. That's the famous 54321 grounding technique. If you really work this one, taking your time and mindfully breathing, it's extremely useful in grounding yourself during periods of heightened anxiety or panic. It's not a fix-all, it's a tool, like taking Tylenol for a headache. It helps take the edge off so you can plan what's next. Anxiety, stress, and panic are killers, you guys. They literally lower our life expectancy. I made a video talking about stress hormones like cortisol that are released during periods of elevated moods. The sooner you can recognize that you're under emotional stress, the sooner you can do something about it, like trying the technique we just went over. The more you do it, the more it will become a go-to coping mechanism. Your brain will automatically crave the peace it gets from breathing and sensory mindfulness. It just takes time. I know there's a lot of hurry up and wait with this illness. Progress can feel slow at times. If you're feeling stagnant like you aren't making progress, Look back five or 10 years. I'm a much different person than I was five or 10 years ago, especially 10 years ago. I've embraced the diagnosis, sought treatment, and even started to help others. It's taken me the better part of a decade to get there, which was agonizingly slow for those around me, but nonetheless, I've made real improvements in the quality of my life. Quality of life is everything. Take extra good care and I'll be back here soon with more Polar Warrior videos. Stay well.